Alligators in your backyard? Mopeds as a main source of transportation only in Myrtle Beach. Let's talk about it today. What's happening guys, it's Jeremy Blanton with Remax Southern Shores. And today we're gonna to discuss some crazy and wild things that I have found after living here in the Myrtle Beach area for the past 20 years. We're gonna discuss some things that I never knew existed before moving to Myrtle Beach and specifically to South Carolina. These are some of the craziest and wildest things that you may never even imagine existed, but they do here in Myrtle Beach. So let's get started with number one on the list, and that is golf carts on the road. Yeah, it's crazy to find, but here in the Myrtle Beach area, it is not uncommon to find a golf cart going down the road. Now you may think, hey, that's not a big deal. You live in the golf course capital of the world. But the thing is, these are public roads where people are trying to drive to get from point A to point B, and you find these electric or battery operated golf carts that might go 15 to 20 miles an hour on a road that's 35 to 40 miles an hour. And this is going to cause a major problem. But people who come to the area rent them from places in downtown Myrtle Beach, and they take drives and go entirely too far up into sections of the beach where they have no business belonging. So when you're out driving around, it is not uncommon to find in Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach, even down in Surfside and Garden City, golf carts crossing over the road. So you need to make sure that you pay attention to golf carts at any point as you're driving around, because you never know when you might run into one. Four. The next thing on the list that I want to talk about is that all of Myrtle Beach, in fact, all of Ori and Georgetown County is flat. I mean, flat like a board flat. There is not really any elevation throughout the entire area. We're along the coastline. And in fact, right now, if I look at my GPS, it would say that we're sitting at 30 feet above sea level but all of Ori and Georgetown County and all the areas surrounding here are basically one flat area. Um, if you start to travel from here towards the western part of the state, you're gonna notice that there's not really any hills to drive over or any mountains until you get on the west side of Columbia. And all of a sudden, your car that's been just cruising along all nice and easy has to work to start going up hills. I remember when we go to visit my family in Georgia, I have to remember how to drive in hilly areas. I grew up in Pennsylvania where I was in the mountains and so you had to learn to go up then go down up and down and when to accelerate when to take your foot off the gas and put it on the brake to hold going down I had to relearn how to do all that stuff well here in Myrtle Beach you don't have to worry about any of it everything is flat very flat and even more so if you go into the city limits of Myrtle Beach North Myrtle Beach and even down in Surfside, everything's basically on a grid where you have avenues and you just have to look. Now, one thing that you wanna make sure you pay attention to is, is it a North Avenue or a South Avenue that you're trying to go to? And number two, which city is it in? Because North Myrtle Beach has a set of North and South Avenues, Myrtle Beach does, and the same happens when you get down to the Southern end. So make sure you pay attention to those and it's gonna help make your trip much easier. The next thing that I found that was really kind of weird and strange to me when I moved here, and even when I would visit, is that when you go into a grocery store or to a gas station, they are selling beer and wine in the store. In fact, the grocery store that's right behind my office here, Lowe's Foods, they actually have a beer garden where you can go in and they have like beer and wine tastings on weekdays. And I watch people walking through the store, pushing their shopping cart with a beer in their hand. You know, as someone who's from Pennsylvania, that stuff never happened. If somebody wanted to buy an alcoholic beverage, they had to go over to the ABC stores and buy it at the state stores instead of in a grocery store. Here in the beach, you can buy your beer or box of wine at any grocery store or gas station in the area. The next thing that I want to talk about is alligators. This is something that is fairly common to our area. If you do buy a house down here, don't be surprised if there's water behind it and an alligator lives in that pond. Now, here's the thing. If you don't bother those alligators, they're more than likely not gonna bother you. However, if you do have small pets or children, I would highly recommend think about getting a fence. It is definitely a nice little level of security to have, and it's a great thing. But I have actually seen in areas of the beach, alligator crossings. 
yeah, it's kind of a weird thing to see or expect, but just know when you're going through those areas, slow down, because if you hit one of those, it's worse than any speed bump you'll ever find. Oh, hey guys, you know what? I realized I was going through this. There may be some other crazy things that I forgot. If so, do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Tell me some of the craziest things that you've seen when visiting Myrtle Beach. I'd love to see it there. All right, so the next thing on the list, which is something I'm not familiar with because I grew up in an area that was kind of more country, is mopeds. There are mopeds all over the area here. And while some of you may be coming from areas that are major metropolitan cities, where people may use that as their main form of transportation, here in our area, people use them and it's actually very dangerous. You know, Myrtle Beach is a very spread out area. Things are not close by in walking distance most of the time. And so you're gonna have to get on some of our main Main roads. Those main roads have speed limits at 55 to 65 miles an hour and if you're on one of those mopeds that tops out at 45 and you're carrying a passenger with a whole bunch of stuff you're not even going to get to that speed and it's something that is super super dangerous. So when you're out traveling the area make sure you keep your eyes peeled for mopeds because they're probably not going to be able to go as fast as traffic and it could be a bad thing in the end. Another thing that I realized was not a big deal until I moved to the south is that every year right around this time the weather service releases the names of all of the hurricanes for that year. What they do is they put a name to every storm that forms that gets to a tropical storm level. They alternate between male and female names and the ones this year they're as old as my grandma it seems but they pick a name for every name of storm. And that way, as a storm forms in the Atlantic Ocean and starts to come towards the coast, they name it and you're going to hear talking all about tracking Alberto or tracking Bertha or whatever the name may be for the storm. You're going to hear all about it. As they release these names every year, I'm crossing my fingers hoping that Jeremy doesn't make it because I don't want to be named the storm that destroys the whole area that everyone remembers forever and forever. The next thing on the list is something I never knew was a big deal until I moved to Myrtle Beach. I lived when I first moved to Myrtle Beach in Briarcliff Acres, which is up on the northern end of the beach. In between Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach is this small little section called Briarcliff. And when we moved there, everyone warned us, beware of bike weeks. And I'm going, what is bike weeks? Well, what is it? Every year, there are two large bike weeks that happen in the Myrtle Beach area, and they are always right around the Memorial Day weekend. So two weeks before, you have a great Harley weekend happening where there are Harley Davidson bikers all over the Grand Strand. They're from the northern end all the way down. So you gotta be real extra careful during these weeks to pay attention to people on the roads. And so after Harley week, you then have the sport bikers who come to town. And this is another large group of people, thousands and thousands of sport bikes that are all across the Grand Strand. Some of these people, they're not driving these bikes on a regular basis, so they're not familiar with them. So you need to be extra cautious when you're on the roads for bikers. Another thing that I found really strange when I moved to the area were these little lizards that were running all over the place. Some of them were bright green, some of them were brown. What these actually are are called green anoles, and they're small little lizards, maybe five to eight inches in length, and they are completely harmless. And so if you see these in your backyard or in your front yard, you want to leave them alone. They're actually something that's helping out a lot. They're eating bugs and spiders and helping to keep the insects down around your house. So they're your best friends. Now, of course, they will freak you out when you go to lift the grill cover and they're inside there, but it's okay. Your heart will be fine and they will be good. Don't kill them. Another thing that I found real interesting when I moved here were king tides. What the heck is a king tide? tide. I never knew what it was so I had to actually research it and look it up on Google and what it says is that king tides are when the earth, the sun, and the moon all align perfectly during a new or full moon. What does that mean for our area? Well here's the basic easiest simplest definition. When a king tide is happening the tides in our area are going to be much higher than normal. So if you're in places down in Garden City and Surfside, it may become a little difficult to get in some of the main access roads. I remember back this winter, I was showing some property down in that area during a king tide, and there were water that was on the road. There was about six to eight inches on the main access ways into that area of the beach. And 
I was a little concerned, am I gonna be able to get my vehicle through? Luckily, I was driving an SUV and didn't have any issues. So you may be wondering, if I buy a house in this area, am I gonna run into flooding? You really don't have to worry because the areas that do experience the king tide flooding are built up on stilts. Those homes are sitting 10, 12 feet up. So you may have a little bit of water down in your garage area, which is open, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna affect your home. So just know king tides come a couple times a year and you do know when they're coming. You can always check the tidal charts. They will tell you basically a year in advance of when the king tides are coming and you can plan accordingly. And the last thing on the list is that in South Carolina, you can buy fireworks. And I'm not just saying buying the little sparklers, woohoo, I'm talking real deal, holy field fireworks. We're talking the kind that you can shoot up into the air 50 feet that explode and erupt everywhere. And so there are tons of fireworks stores throughout the area. In fact, you can even buy them sometimes at the local Walmart. I did this last year on 4th of July, and it's a great thing to have in the area. But here's the caveat. Technically, you're not supposed to shoot them off on the beach or in a lot of homeowners associations either. They don't allow for you to do it. But here's the reality. When it comes 4th of July, if you go down to the beach, you're gonna find fireworks being shot off all up and down the coast. And in many home divisions, you're gonna find them as well because it's a great easy access and people love to shoot them off and celebrate our country freedom. All right, so those are some of the crazy things that I thought of of Myrtle Beach. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure you give it a thumbs up, get that bell on and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. See ya.